Hey, Tim, how you doing today? What's happening, Ryan? You got to be doing better than me, but I don't know if you are. But how you doing today, man? Pretty good, man. You know, feeling good that... Uh, Full olds, huh? <laughs> you know, just got another check, and uh, now I'm finally investing in everything to start my cold calling. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just take your advice and not hire the VA that I have, not no. have her making the calls. Nope. Um, well, you live. I'm, I'm audio taping, so go ahead and you can talk. But I just want to warn you in advance because I, I think you're used to this. It ain't nothing new. So we're just going to talk and yap and, you know, I'm going to try to extract as much information. So go ahead. Tell me about that VA. You're not going to hire the VA. You're going to do it yourself. Build your own system. That way you know in and out. You said I live? Uh, yeah, we live, man. We recording. Oh, we live right now? Yeah, we live right now, man. She. <laughs> So let's do okay. this. Let's do this. Tell me, finish telling me about, you know, uh, let me just tell these guys. Ryan wanted to do some cold calling, and he called me and asked me what I thought, and I told him he should do everything himself so he can learn it the right way, and then he could teach somebody. But uh, nobody's got your best interest at heart. They're working by the hour. They don't care if they close or don't close. You're still paying them. They got guaranteed money. So right, tell me right. what else. <laughs> Fill us in some more on that. On the cold calling? Yep. What can you share with us? What you've learned so far? What you got going? So, so far what I've learned is a few good lists to go after. And uh, pretty much when you, you know, starting off cold calling, you, it's best to just be the one-man show. You make all the calls. You play the acquisition role. That's right. Setting up the appointments and you play the disposition role, closing the deals and everything. So I'm like, okay, I'll do that getting started right and uh, see, see how that goes um, well see and, now now yeah. i like what you're saying ryan because you're in control right, so when right, i ask you any right. questions you got to give me the answers instead of i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't even know what they're saying i haven't even called them and check on them so you, once you build it out now you got a system exactly and that can duplicate anytime any place you want Right, right. Anything else you you want? Because I'm gonna get to this. What is it? Uh, you said 45. What what is the title of it again? 28,000 uh, and, and 45 days, 45 right? Days. All right, 28,000 and 45 days. We're gonna get to that. But okay. is there anything else you wanted to talk about as far as cold calling? And I know you're just getting started. Have you actually made any calls by chance? Are you still building? The system. I'm still building. Yep. I, I didn't. Um, I tried it. I had about a list of about ten that I called a few months ago. I was a pre foreclosure list, and you know, didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. Didn't even realize I was cold calling. <clears throat> but um, up to this point, no, I haven't. Uh, so I just been kind of educating myself on uh, strategies when you cold calling, and as far as you know, how to talk to a seller or yep. potential seller. You want me to give you the best advice? Sure. Hey, you just learn as you go, man. There ain't no exact way. Nobody's got an exact way. Just do it. Uh, I agree. And that way you're adaptable. But I will give you one warning. Before you start messing with people in foreclosure, what's my advice to you? See if you know it. Your advice is to know the laws in that state. That's right. Especially your state. <laughs> your state will, yeah. man, they will throw you up under the jail. I know, you're and, right. And you're never right. give you any water or food. So if you mess around with that market, man, you just asking for a bunch of problems unless you go see who. Who do I recommend you go see? You go see an attorney. That's right. Keep you out of jail, man. Keep you from losing money. Because if you don't do it that way, you're heading straight there. So I'm glad you're taking my advice. I'm glad you're listening. So yep. now uh, I haven't. You made $8,800 in June uh, 28th, if I'm not mistaken. And then you made, yeah. that was a $8,800 uh, virtual wholesale deal that we recorded, put it up on the website. All and right. then you did another deal that we haven't even did the recording on because I've been busy, hadn't got around to it. Now that was $11,000. Uh, the other deal, yeah, that was, um, yeah, that was like eleven thousand. Oh, yep, well, eleven thousand dollars roughly. Now, <clears throat> how in the heck are you counting up twenty eight thousand dollars? That's right. Now you know. No, before I even go there, Ryan, I got to, I got to play with you a little bit on this one. Twenty eight 
28,045 days. That's a hell of a title because I remember when I was in my heydays, I did, you know, 100,000 in 30 days, 100,000 in 39 days. And, you know, I'm not trying to compare numbers or anything like that or checks, but I like the title. 28K in 45 days, and you ought to use that, again, to market yourself, man. And I, I said, Ryan, take some pictures, man. Even if you got to go fly there just to take a picture, get somebody to send you a picture so you can put a picture with a check and a title, 28K in 45 days. I'm buying that. That's a hell of a story. I'm buying that, man. So here's what we're doing. You make one check from what you're doing. You make multiple okay. checks if you tie into what I'm trying to get you to do. And you know that already because you've already done it. Yep. And true. you can get more checks than that once you build some more stuff out. So get paid more than once, man. You know, take them I pictures, agree. find them, and tie it all together. All right, next. I remember the last story, man. I loved it. You said you made $8,800 in your pajamas. I don't, did you say in your pajamas? But on the couch. Yep, on the okay, couch. With your computer. Eating a bowl of cereal. All right. I love that, man. <laughs> now, see, the, <laughs> the listeners, man, they probably said, you know what? You guys are full of crap. But no, it's the honest guy truth. Okay? Yep, and man. until they do it, they always going to doubt. But when I learned real estate, they said, hey, look, you can deal with no money, no credit, no job, no real estate license, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I still hear people today say you can't do it that way, but I did it, and I know that commercial was absolutely right. So let me just ask you now, can you do your business with no money? Do well, you need some money? Yeah, you do need a little bit of money. So it was your money, your money that you used? Yeah. Okay, good, good. But you can use somebody else's money too. Yeah. Right. Yep. You okay. Somebody else's money as well. Right. Now, what about credit? Did you need credit? No credit at all. Did you need a job? No job at all. Did you need a real estate license? No license at all. Did you have to be a male? No. Did, did you have to be a female? Nope. Not did, at all. Okay. If, if you're black, do you got to be black? Nope. Do you got to be white? Matter. What about white? Nope, not at all. Chinese. <laughs> nope. And I always say real estate is an equal opportunity wealth bidder. So you didn't have to go none of that. The only qualification is you needed some money and right. education. And what you got is you have ambition and you took action. Taking action, I think, is the main thing that you've done. Hey, you know what? Why, Ryan? No, why? Why do you? A lot of people say, hey, look, I'm going to be successful in real estate. And they go and pay $25,000 or more for a real estate course. I ain't knocking the price. Right? And right. then they don't take action on what they learned. What makes you take action? What forces you to go out and do it, even though you don't know it all, you never done it before, especially this last deal? What makes Ryan go out there and do it? So maybe... If you can tell them what motivates you, maybe they'll go out and be motivated. So, what is it, Ryan? Well, you know, just seeing so many people talk about it, and it doesn't seem like those people that's talking about it just some some guy or girl that has some high IQ and all of this. It's like I'm like, hold on, if they can do it, I know I can do it. Mm. So just here, just hearing it and seeing people and their success stories showing checks and just talking about it. And then once I finally did a deal, I'm like, wow, this stuff <laughs> really works. So that was the motivation once I did my first deal. I'm like, okay, I need to build systems. I need to get more organized. I need to, you know, start having uh, money for my marketing budget. So it, it, it really only took that one deal to really – me say, yep, this is real. I'm in it all the way. And I've just been at it now, man. It's just hitting it even harder. Yeah. Because, you know, now I'm expecting to get something. Oh, oh yeah. You ain't wishing you know? now. You expect. You yeah. know all you got to do is do the work. Now, you know, wh yeah. what they say is this. Real estate works. We just got to get it to work for you. And when you said other people were doing it, 
It's like, you know what? I'm a, I, here's what you thought. You know what? I'm going to put some of that real estate money. I'm going to put my name on some of that real estate money. You know, and I'm looking at oh, this yeah. person next to me, and they ain't, they ain't no different than you. The only difference mm -hmm. is they took action. They, they did, moved on it. Now, what I like about you, Ryan, you doing real estate. <laughs> How many miles is it from D.C. to Florida, man? Do you know? Yeah, probably say uh, about seven hundred miles. Seven hundred? God, I thought it was further than that. Wow. Okay. All 700, right. Seven hundred. Yeah. So it's kind of close, but still, you got some people that they won't even do it in their own neighborhood. But yeah. you decided I'm gonna go seven hundred miles to Florida to do real estate, right? Right. Okay. Florida, out of all places, out of all your deals you're done, what percentage of them were done in Florida? So 700 miles away from you, you've done how many, uh, 80, 70, 90? Give me a percentage of how many are in Florida that you've done. Probably 75%. 75% of the deals you're doing are 700 miles away. Man, that defies logic. It really does, and I'll tell you what, I don't know how you do it and why you do it, but man, you're, you're successful at it. So, um, the good thing of it is, Ryan, is you now are comfortable, which is kind of crazy now. You can, get, you can get lackadaisical, but now you're comfortable. You know, you know what you're doing. Now, this last deal that you just, you know, sent me a HUD one on today, you got somebody involved in New York with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now, why don't you just kind of briefly explain that? I'm gonna go back to that twenty, that twenty-eight thousand, <laughs> that title okay. of twenty-eight thousand in forty-five days. So, you explain to us. You, I ain't gonna say nothing. You ex explain the deal. All right. So this is how I did the deal. Pretty much, uh, I tied this property up, got it under contract virtually. I found the motivated seller. <clears throat> and uh, we pretty much we was talking over the phone. I sent them a contract. Uh, <laughs> once we had the numbers, and it was through DocuSign, they signed it. Once they signed that contract, I knew I had control over it. So uh, uh, they, I asked them, can you know take me as many pictures of, of the property as you can? And uh, so they did that, sent it to me the next day. What I did was uh, I'm in several facebook groups so i marketed the property on facebook and i had uh, a guy he reached out to me said hey i'm interested um so pretty much uh he had his guys that was in uh, florida check the property out we was negotiating we made an offer and i was like boom it was uh pretty easy so i'm like hey look this property it has code violations and nuisance liens on it so I'm saying uh, in order to get a clear title, you have to clear up all the liens and everything. So I have to sell it to you as is a quick claim deed. Most people may say, hey, if someone's selling a quick claim deed, don't get involved with it because you inherit everything that the property has. This guy knew he was getting it at a great deal and didn't care because he was. He was getting it at a great deal. So that's how uh, we did the deal. Everything was virtually, I never met the guy. And now this guy, I know he's a buyer. He lives in New York, but he invests in Florida. So he said, anything you can get, <clears throat> you know, I'll buy it pretty much if, uh, Ooh, if it's in my price range. Wee, man, that is big right there. See, I thought yep. I thought it was the last coal seller that you did that bought this one. Because y'all didn't build a relationship. Now you didn't build a relationship with a cash buyer. Now that's a cash buyer. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to build the list. He's a cash buyer because he bought. And he's buying with cash yep. from you. Yep. That's a cash buyer. Wow. Yeah. All right, now, liens, nuances. You didn't care about the liens. It didn't stop. Nope. Yeah, it didn't stop me at all. Wow. And then you did DocuSign. So, Ryan, where do you live at again? I'm in the Washington, D.C. area. And you tied up a property over the phone with a motivated seller with DocuSign. Right. I did. So you didn't have to go to closing? Nope. Didn't have to. You didn't have to meet the seller? Didn't have to meet the seller. 
how long from that com now see when you talk to that seller on the phone that experience is why you don't need to take anybody else's course you close that man that means you got mad skills so all you got to do is to keep practicing and you're going to get better and better because you can hear. Why was they motivated? What motivated them to sell a discount? Was it those liens and the, and the encumbrances on it? Pretty much. You know, the liens were small. They was like, uh, you know, I have liens on the property and, you know, I'm just behind on payments as far as all their payments that they have with the card note. So they just wanted to sell the property to have a little bit of money move in with their family mm -hmm. you know to get going again <clears throat> so they were very very eager and motivated uh, but yeah it was pretty much the liens on the property and they just needed some money okay so did you re how much was they behind in back payments dollar amount well well no no the property was free and clear oh boy it was free and clear right but they had those liens Okay. Property. Okay. And they were they were saying they had some other financial um, obligations that they need to pay, and they were just behind mm -hmm. on those. So um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's why it was motivated. Now, how about the end? How about the interior? Did it need repairs? Because I'm trying to figure out why they didn't go with a realtor. It, it probably had to be in bad shape on the inside. Do you know? Yeah, looking at the pictures, um, it needed some rehab. Uh, probably everything pretty much needed to be updated. Right. Um, so they they were they were pretty motivated. Okay. Everything needed to be pretty much updated. Right. Uh, it looked so, like it had a solid foundation and a good roof. And but that's yeah. the things you look at as a roof, but you ain't had to. Y'all usually look at pictures to tell. But pretty much it was the liens plus it needed some repairs, and they wanted it quickly. Probably get the money. They didn't want to be dealing with a realtor, right. so you, exactly. it def, it defies all logic. Why? Here's here's the, here's the skeptic in the crowd. Why on earth would somebody sell you their house that has liens on it, and they own it free and clear, and it needs some repairs? Why would they sell it to Ryan? See. We don't know the answer. What you're supposed to do as a real estate investor is you're supposed to market to find those people. And then you get on the phone and you have a conversation. And you let them you're tell right. you what they want. You try to give them what they want so you can get what you want. Quit, you know, quit trying to make everything by the book. And, you know, it's got to be black or white. Just have the conversation. So, that sounds like I got mostly everything on that. Um, you were talking to the seller on the phone. How long did it take to send them a contract? What was the time period? And they uh, signed. I think over over about two days. We talked a little bit the first day, and then that second day, I phoned back up with them, and they're pretty much ready. We were just talking about the pricing and. Uh, you know, that first day, I was kind of just listening to them and, you know, just talking. I was just getting to know them. Yep. That second day, uh, we did the contract. And uh, I even told them, um, in, the, in my inbox, I agreed to them that um, <clears throat> if after we close, we'll still give them an extra 30 days, mm -hmm. you know, nice. their, you know, stuff together all that so they won't you know at least they have that money and they still have a little bit of time to get everything out and kind of do whatever they need to do so mm -hmm. they were um, excited about that the the end buyer didn't have a problem with it at all mm -hmm. so it worked out really well hey you know it's funny when when now that i think back on this remember hey terry you got a contract you got a contract now you sending contracts with docusign are you worried about contracts anymore, Ryan? No. Not, not in the least bit, are you? Nope. And now, because <laughs> <laughs> nah, once you got their signature, that gives you equitable interest in the property. If they agree to sell it at X, you know, they're, they're obligated to sell it at X. So right, right. Their, their contracts, all you got to do is understand some basic language, put in there what you want. Put in there your escape clause. Did you do and or signs on your contract? Yes. There I you did. go. Okay, so you did good on that. Now that check was how much again? Uh, eleven thousand and some change. Eleven thousand and some change. All right. So here we go. 
Let's do the numbers on that property. We're going to start with $11,000. Now, again, you told me, well, not you didn't tell me, you text me that it was $28,000 in 45 days. We're going to count it off to them. All right, so okay. how much was the after-repaired value on the property? After-repaired value on this property was about $120,000. $120,000. And repairs is roughly... Oh, the repairs, um, I would say maybe 25000 Okay, so $120,000 are of twenty five in repairs. Did the owner tell you what they were asking, or did you just come out with an offer? How did that work? They kind of told me uh, what they were um, what they was looking for. And what's that number? Uh, well, they came out with about 70000 Wow. So, Ryan, right there, I bet I bet you was doing backflips when they said seventy. Yeah, when they said seventy, I was like, that, that, that's cool. I don't really have to negotiate some. Mm -hmm. I kind of um, thought that I could at least make around ten grand on it, try to sell it for eighty. Um, and I knew it wasn't a whole lot of room, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I just kind of took a chance with it. And, and the 120, that was uh, like a conservative ARP. Right. So it could have been higher, huh? But you just said, okay, right. let's settle at 120. It could have been 130, 135, which would have mean right. there's more room in for cash buyer and there's more room for you for a profit on the flip. Right. 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 And also the repairs, that 125, that was, that was kind of high as well, mm. but that was just You covered really, yourself. Yeah, I was just, you know, using it. Yep, to again, cover more money for the cash buyer, more money for Ryan if it comes in at 15 instead of 25. Now, Ryan, we talking about, this is August the 22nd, 2019. A owner has a house that's worth 120 plus. It needs 20 in repairs. And they came in and said they wanted 70. Right. Now, what is it? That's what they was asking. Yeah, what, what now what? Those numbers, uh, them numbers. What do you see in those numbers? You see what? Just based on that, because you now hopefully are looking at numbers a lot closer than you used to. But because you've got some previous experience, what was the first thing that went through your mind when they said we want seventy? What did you when see? When I said we, when I said we want seventy, I was, you know, I was like, okay, let me, you know, kind of run some numbers, and I'm saying the ARV is roughly one twenty. You know, let me try to make a ten thousand dollar fee. The rehab could be about twenty five k, so it's, it's a little tight. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually end up negotiating with them and say, "Hey, look, can I do fifty five? How much? Fifty five thousand? Oh my, right, the, the nerve of you! You took a person with a hundred twenty thousand dollar house." And you offered them fifty five. I know you feel guilty. Uh, <laughs> I I just told them with the renovation that I would have to do to the property, plus what properties are selling for in that area, you know, it's going to be kind of tight for me, and I, you know, I want to make a little bit of money. So um, we actually we actually came up with the number and agreed on sixty thousand. Sixty thousand, like meet me in the right. middle. <laughs> <laughs> right, we got it tied up at about sixty thousand. All right, so you got it under contract for sixty thousand. How many days to close? Uh, oh, we closed pretty fast. We closed this one in like uh, two weeks. No, I'm sorry. In your contract, how many days you tell them you close? Uh, thirty days. Thirty day closing. How much did you have to put down for deposit to tie that up? Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Escrow. Yep. All right, excellent. Very good. So let's go to the next step further. You run some Facebook stuff and tell me about the guy that contacted you from New York. Now that is that a um, is he a rehabber? Is he gonna go in and fix it up and sell it? Do you know? Yeah, no, he's keeping it as a rental. Gonna keep it as a rental. He's a buy and hold person, landlord. I love him. I love being a landlord. Right, all right. right. So he's gonna fix it up somewhat. I don't think he's gonna put all, you know, twenty five thousand into a rental. He no, probably just no, going to be a no. bare bones minimum. Okay. 
and whatever that may be, it may be 5, 10, 15, it may be whatever. Did he tell you how much he's going to rent the house out for? Do you know what he's going to rent it out for? No, he didn't. He didn't tell me that. Okay, let's just play. I'm going to play devil's advocate again. I love numbers. So, Ryan, what do you think? What what did he close? I wonder what his, his final buy price. Um, what did he buy it from you for? Put it that way. Okay, so I tied it up for 60 mm-hmm. and he um, he bought it from me for 74 Okay. And we split the... Uh, it was cost. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Let's just say that he puts 20, he got it for 74. Let's say he puts 26 in improvements. That's 100,000. Let's say he's into it for $100,000. What do you think rents could be in that area? Did you even check what you should next time yeah, if you didn't do it too high? Rents in that area was going from 700 to about 850. Okay, let's go high end, 850. So, Ryan, when you got that house and next house you get in the future, you check the rents because you could advertise it. I don't know if you did or not. I'm just yapping. You could advertise it to a buy and holder. Let's say 850 is the rent. I'm going to do the return on investment. Multiply that by 12 is 10,200. And we divide by 100,000. Might have did it backwards. It's 10.2% return. Which ain't bad, but it's going to take um, eight fifty. Let's see how long it's going to take to get his money back. One hundred and eighteen months to get his money back. So one hundred eighteen months. Let's divide that by twelve. Almost ten years. Almost yeah. 10 years to get his money back. So, you know, it kind of sounds like my buddy I let you talk to uh, when you were here. Oh, yeah. What's his name? Steve. Steve. Yeah, Steve. Yep. But Steve liked to get his money back in seven like five years. years I think. Oh, seven. He got oh, seven. seven. Yeah, 80, he get his back in eight, seven years, 84 months. So it's still a good model, no matter if you get your money back in seven years, 10 years. Um, it's still good. As long as you don't start getting up to 15, 20, it's still a good return. Now, Let's say your guy can get his money back in seven years, then that's going to put him up to maybe 15% return on his investment. So that's where the return on investment comes in handy. All right, now I don't got off in the teaching now. All right, so let's get back to the deal. So your guy's buying it for 74 and he's going to rent it out. And is he, right. the other properties that he wants, or is he still going to hold those also? Is he going to go in as a landlord? He's going to take each house individually, you know? No, I don't know. I'm not sure about that one. Well, you ought to call him and have a deep conversation. Talk about returns. Talk about his plan. You need to know how much money he's got and what he plans on doing with him because that's your best friend. Uh And see what he wants. And once you know what he wants, Ryan, what are you going to do then when you know what he wants? Once I know what he wants, I'm going to go after exactly what he wants. That's exactly right. Two bedroom, one bathroom, 900 square feet, or somewhere in that area. I'll be looking for those all day. There you go. All right. So that's eleven thousand. Is it more close to twelve thousand for your profit, or just eleven thousand? No, no, it's closer to twelve. Let's call it twelve. Kind of round it off. All right. Let's call it twelve. Now I'm gonna go back to the eighty-eight hundred dollar deal. Okay. Let's make that nine thousand. So you're at twenty-one grand. I'm thinking. I had another one. that. Okay, that's exactly yeah, where I'm probably. going with this. Yeah. How much was that one? That one was around 11 as well. That's the one we haven't talked about yet, right? No, we didn't. All right. That's where I used the co-home, co-seller guy uh, as well on that one too. Okay, so you did that one. You made 8800 bucks. You used the co-wholesaler. And now the $11,000 check that you did, you did a co-wholesaler right. on that one. So. And then the $12,000 check, you just sent the, uh, the information on the day, that was you flipped it to a buy and hold uh, investor, cash right. buyer. Landlord. Landlord. Yep. There you go. So you got a little variety there, man. Uh, I know you feeling really confident in yourself now. Yeah, I'm starting to get more confident. Don't right. Virtual thing. Right. You even sound confident on the phone, man. <laughs> you, sound a little, you sound a little sketchy earlier, but that's, that comes with the territory. You know, it does, but you can see yeah. that you got some mad skills 
because you're probably out working everybody else. I don't think there's anybody close to you that's trying to do deals 700 miles away. Everybody's probably doing it, you know, in their own neighborhood, but you, hey, you're stretching out a bit. All right, let's go to that coal wholesaler. Hope you got the numbers all figured out. Where's that deal at? Okay, that one, um, I picked it up for... Okay, before you tell me what you picked it up for, where's it located? Where's that deal at? That one is in Jacksonville. Okay, so now the $8,800 deal, where's that deal at? That's in Jacksonville. Jacksonville, Florida, to be exact. Oh, no, no, no. The 8800 is uh -huh. in Lakeland, Lakeland, Florida. But it's Florida. So you got Florida, Florida, Florida and to the twelve thousand dollar deal. Where is that? The last one is in Jacksonville as well. Florida. Florida is yeah, a gold mine for you, man. <laughs> it, it is. It is. So where where should you be investing at? Florida. See, the market. You just did a market test. The check, the shut up check, the check you made tells you you ought to be in Florida. So yep. that's pretty dang gone good. All right, so let's talk about the co wholesaler. How much okay. is the ARV on that one? The ARV on the second one was about three hundred thousand. Okay, you stepping up in price on that one. You usually like yeah, usually a cheap neighborhood. Time. Come on yeah, now, yeah. I know that scared the heck out of you, man. Come on now, it don't. Was, <laughs> <laughs> it was because um, I got another contract for one seventy three. Mm. Man, your numbers are I, for for a guy Ryan. When you was here, you wasn't really filling them num numbers. But man, you you doing some great spreads. I don't know, I don't know what you eating in that cereal. But you know now you're getting them spreads right. So it was worth three hundred. How much right. in repairs? Repairs was it needed a full renovation. Um, so we comped it. I mean, for the repairs, uh, we got it at about sixty thousand. Okay. For renovation. Sixty thousand in repairs. Three hundred thousand dollar value. Sixty in repairs. What did you get it under contract for? Uh, so I I won this one. This was uh, at an auction. I got it under contract for one seventy three. One seventy three. One seventy three, and uh, I reached out to a, a wholesaler, co wholesaler, to bring a buyer. So he tied it up with me for about one eighty five. All right, so let me just go back and rehash that for these guys because some of them, their head is spinning. You know, like your head spin when you were doing it, like my head spin. So we're yeah. going to try to make it clear for them. It was worth 300 needed uh -huh. 60000 in repairs. You put it under contract for 173 173 And then you looked for a wholesaler, a wholesaler that probably had a buyer in mind or someone that can come right. in and fix the house up and sell it. Because the guy yeah. you sold it to, you, got, you gave the contract to, they weren't going to fix it up. They were going to flip nope. it. They wanted to make money also, just like you. Right. So that's why you called it a co-wholesale. And then you call what's that other word, virtual? <laughs> virtual wholesale? Virtual wholesale. So he, oh. Ryan found another Ryan. Right. And so right. the second Ryan... It now has a buyer, right? He had the buyer lined up. Okay, so Ryan puts a contract on the property, 170. Another Ryan comes along and puts a contract on it for what, 184? Five. 185. Five. So Ryan number one makes 11 grand. Ryan number two has an in buyer that buys it for how much? 185. Okay, now what about the guy that bought it at the end, the last person? That price I didn't figure out That's because all right. I had to. I was in Miami already, but they made me. Luckily, I was there on vacation. They actually said you need to be at the title company to close this deal because uh, the bank or something. They actually need me physically there, so I had to drive mm -hmm. from Miami to Jacksonville, stay there for a couple hours, and then drive right back. So I had to physically be there. So when we did the closing. The end buyer wasn't there. They had me come in, sign all the documents first. This was around 12 or something. And then the other guy, he came around 2. That's what the attorney was saying to do his closing. So I didn't find out exactly what he made. But mm -hmm. later on, I found, I think that he sold it uh, roughly for around 200 somewhere like that. But I'm not sure. Okay. Well, you need to, you need to try to find that out. 
because you got to follow your deals all the way through. So you can say, okay, look, the end buyer sold it for, let's say, 280 Well, that end buyer makes this amount of money. Ryan number one made this amount of money. Ryan number two made this amount of money. Ryan number three made this amount of money. One day, Ryan, you're going to eliminate the other people. You're going to put a contract on it and you're going to fix it up, rehab it, and you're going to get that nice check for 50, 60, 70,000 one day. And you're going to quit messing around right. with these little wholesale checks, even though you like them. Oh, yeah. Even though you like them. Yeah, that's the goal. You get 12 checks. I'm sorry, $12,000 on this deal that you just sent. If you can make 60 grand on one deal, that's five wholesale deals that you've done. So you're gonna start looking at the numbers a little bit differently. But again, you know, nothing wrong with what you're doing, but one day you're gonna say, you know what, I'm going for the bigger money because that bigger money is what's gonna pay, you know, your daughters, and you already said your daughter loves stuff, so she needs, she needs some more oh, stuff, yeah. man. <laughs> Yep. Is that money? I bet you already got that eleven thousand or twelve thousand you made. You probably already got that spent. But you, <laughs> but you can't spend sixty thousand that fast, man. It's like man, you could yeah, spend it no. and you have some change left over. And you're like man, she, I got some money in the bank now. Yep. But hey, man, that's you know true. that's 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 really great, man. You know when I seen it, I couldn't do nothing but laugh. Uh, Ryan playing with me he didn't send me damn another hood one statement. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Ryan, let's nice do time. this. Let's do this right here. Your first, I'm sorry, the $8,800 check. You live where? In the D.C. area. And this, this house was in Florida. Did right. you have to go to Florida to pick up your check? For the 88 no. Actually, they did a wire. I mean, no, no. They didn't wire that one. Mm -hmm. They overnight FedEx that one, and they gave me a physical check. So, remember, I told you, get those checks, because, man, those, those, those checks are nice. Okay. Right. Now, so you're telling me you stayed in D.C., Washington, and they brought the check to you? Pretty much, yep. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, man. You know, wait a minute. I, I know. I'm just playing right now. But if I'm sitting on this, uh, I'm listening to you, Ryan, me and you talk. And if I'm someone out there, I'm going, wait a minute. Ryan did this deal in his pajamas, on the couch, eating cereal on his computer. He bought a house made $8,800, and they sent him the check. Ryan didn't even have to go to Florida. Right. Oh, come right. on, Terry, man. You're messing with me, man. I know you're lying. You're making this up. You're in Ryan pulling my leg. All right, so you skeptic. <laughs> Let me do the second one. So your second deal, Ryan, was $11,000. You live where again? I live in D.C. And this next house was in Florida. Did you have to go to Florida to pick up your check and your money? Well, coincidentally, mm -hmm. I had already uh, booked a trip to Miami. And if I would have, I would have probably spent $500 round trip because they actually wanted me to close in person because uh, the auction platform company. Mm -hmm. So they like, he has to be here. You know, this is his first time dealing with us. And, this, you know, but after I, after they, you do your first one, you don't have to be there again. Okay. Now, this is was completely different. So I had to go there. All right, so you were already there, but even if you had to spend five hundred dollars to go pick up eleven thousand dollars, let me do the math on that. Uh, yeah, that anyway, uh, like, no problem. <laughs> if they had told you, hey Ryan, in order for you to get this check, you had to spend five hundred dollars, you'd have told them, no, no, that's too much money to spend. <laughs> Nah, I would have did it anyway. <laughs> All right, let's do this last one, man. You know, Terry, you ought to stop messing with people, man. <laughs> so, yeah. this twelve thousand dollar check, you live where, Ryan? Washington D.C. area. And they probably saying, Terry, stop it, man. We already know where Ryan lives. At. You already said you already asked Ryan fifteen times where he live at. We know he live in D.C. And we already know he did a deal in Florida, Terry, because we didn't heard it before. Ryan, where was the deal again? <laughs> Okay, did you have to go there to pick up your check and your money? 12000 No, I, I didn't. What did they do? How did you get the money? They did a wire, and mm -hmm. I actually used the same a title company as the second one that made me come. Mm -hmm. But since this was a totally different transaction, they just sent the wire to me. Wow. 
So you got title company in hand, you got a buyer in hand, all because you went out and took some action. Now you're feeling comfortable. You ain't worried about contracts. You ain't worried about wholesaling and co-wholesaling. Woo! You on your way, ain't you? Right, right. And actually, uh, the title company she referred me to. She said, "Hey, it's a big event with some big names coming up." That's right. To go, I'm gonna connect you with some people. Mm -hmm. So. That was, um, that was about a, a week or so ago, two weeks. I flew out there to Jacksonville just for a day. And she connected me with one of the guys that purchased the, the property from me. And he's a big time wholesaler in uh, the Jacksonville area. Mm. And I, I, I met um, a lender. I met just a handful of good people that I'm like, wow, man, if I came out here, you know, spent three hundred dollars round trip ticket, but it was worth it because the connections that I made. Yep. And uh yeah, man, I got a, a, a list of other buyers <clears throat> contractors and, you know, anything you could think of. But then Ryan, come on man. You know, you you graduated did you you got a college degree? No, nah, community college dropout. And was your family born with wealth? Did you get a silver spoon handed to you? Nope. And you told me you was homeless, right? Yep, I was homeless. How long were you homeless? See, what I'm trying to convince everybody on the phone that's listening, Ryan, that's out there listening, they ain't got no dang on excuse. I don't understand why they don't at least try. Because you an average guy. You above average because you took action. You're highly, you're highly, highly above average because you took action. But I'm trying to convince these guys, Ryan, he don't have no specialty. No one gave him nothing. He was homeless. How long were you homeless? And you tell me about your son living with you when you was homeless, right? Yeah, well, I was homeless for roughly about a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you I was, was sleeping in my car. And you told me you was in a I rough, went, rough part of the neighborhood, wasn't you? Yep, and then my car broke down. Mm -hmm. So I was sleeping in my car with my clothes. Me and my son's clothes at that time. Wow. So you came up from hardship. See, that hardship is good because it makes you go, you know what? I don't never want to go back there again. So I'm going I'm to work this, this wholesaling business, this real estate business at like night and day. And you said some last time, never ending. I can't remember your words. Never stop or something along those lines. Never ending. I can't even remember now, but you driven because of your past. You don't never want to go there again. So... Man, I tell you, um, you know, this has been really great for inspiration for others to prove they can do it if they just take action. Because there's plenty of room, Ryan. There's a whole bunch of houses you're not even getting that right. someone else could be doing in their own neighborhood, out of state. But you should, you're an inspiration to them. Yeah. I told, I told one of my students today. He just joined me. I said, man, you, this guy Ryan, and because he he looked at the videos. He says, how Ryan doing? I says, man, I got to interview Ryan because he did $11,000. I ain't even interviewed him yet. I said, but he just sent me another, another HUD one, so I'm going to go interview him first, and then I'm going to send you, my student, that information because he all inspired. He, he, man, he's the most exciting guy I think I've met so far. Every time I talk on the phone, he just bumbling. <laughs> he, just, he just drooling all over himself. I got to slow him down. He's like ADHD. That's good. Yeah. I said, man, That's shit. Good. Now, if you take action along you know, what your energy is doing, Oh man, you're gonna get me tired because he's just yeah. he's just ten out of ten every single day I talk to him. But anyway, Ryan, let's do it one more time. What can you give these guys to get them off their duff so they can see some financial success? So they can see that real estate works and this ain't all a bunch of hype and a whole bunch of crap gurus are selling. This stuff works. I know it, you know it, but maybe you can just think of something, anything you want. My advice would be, um, is, you know, while, you know, I was always like, like on the edge of doing it, not knowing, but I eventually just kind of took action and kind of just implemented right away, not like wait a few days, as soon as you hear some information, like you should say, okay, I'm going to do this right now and start just right away. And I think that was where um, more one of my strengths, I just went at it, man, when, when it was time to go pull a list of some motivated sellers or whatever I had to do, I just went at it and, and made that a uh, priority. 
So but you you really didn't know what you was it. you didn't know how all this was going to fit together. I didn't. But, but I you didn't. went and got the list, and you go, yep. okay, I'll figure it out when I get there. And so people sometimes are scared. Well, Terry, I can get the list, but I don't know what to do after that. Well, God dang it, get the list first and then work to try and figure it out. I have a saying, the rich stay rich because they figure it out. I know now, Ryan, when there's things you don't know, you will try to get them figured out because you know if you get it figured out, there's a paycheck at the other end of the road. The yep, rich stay true. rich because they figure it out. And that's how you're going to get wealthy and rich, Ryan, by figuring things out that you don't know. Right, right. All right, so that's we, true. you know, hopefully that helps someone out there that's listening to this to encourage them to to do it and you know one thing they're gonna say is you know what man i remember one day i was listening to ryan and terry talk on the phone and i had enough of the procrastination i had enough of excuse making you know i'm gonna put the responsibility on me and they go out and they make some money and go man it was that guy ryan and terry that i listened to five ten years ago but for you ryan again man you're putting your system together put the pitches together keep talking to people Pretty soon, Ryan, you're going to look up and you're going to say, whatever happened to the world I used to live in, because now people are calling you and saying, Ryan, they probably still doing it. Are you still going to those tax auctions with, with students? Uh, no, I kind of, you know what? I, I don't think I'm going to deal with no more students. I just kind of <laughs> What's wrong, man? Myself, uh, what, what's wrong with students? Uh, you know, it was, it was kind of taking time away from, from me, but I yep. am. I'm going to an auction in uh, Indianapolis in a few weeks. Yep. yep. Indiana. So, yeah, you had to focus on you, right, instead of them students, because they right, got right. them students got a lot of needs, man. They 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 needy, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yep, but you know what? Even though they needy, the relationship, and when they do good, Ryan, from what you taught them, man, there ain't nothing like that in the world, man. It's like birthing a new child. You know, because oh, yeah. you you you're giving back, but see, understand, you got to make your money too. There's still things your your daughter need, and you got to get those needs taken care of. But at some right, point, right. you're gonna roll out your system, man, and uh, people are gonna want it because you got the checks, you got the experience, and that's what people want. They want somebody that they can look up to and know that that person. Is successful and they and they gonna you know help them out as much as they can. So hey Ryan, I really appreciate it. Um, again, I'm gonna send no you the problem. audio and then again okay. you gotta take the audios I'm sending you. You gotta chop it up so it fits you and put it in your put it in your storage bank, man, because you're gonna roll it out one day. Right. And you're yeah, gonna roll it out. You're gonna roll out a whole system. And, you know, you're going to start interviewing people. You're going to start doing things to, you know, build your system out. So you got to see it first, Ryan, because I know when I went to the seminar, man, the guy I went and seen, he taught seminars on how he gets people to go to the back room, whip out the visa cards, and this dude makes $200,000, dollars $500,000 $500, an event. And I wow. went, damn. This dude can wow. make five hundred because he, he had two he had two planes. Right, he owned a horse track, man. This dude had a lot of stuff. Then that recession hit, and he lost it all. But you know, when you can make five hundred thousand dollars on an event by just teaching real estate, man, I thought that was ridiculous. So I wanted to be like him at that point. Like the heck with all that other stuff. I'm gonna be like you. Wow, that, that, that's pretty good. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. All right, Ryan. Hey, man. Uh, you know, keep, keep sending those uh, those HUD ones, man. I will, man. All right. Thanks for, for and, the interview, and uh, you take care. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Bye. All right.